today on an all-new Dr. Phil. They're back. Boomerang kids. Young adults you thought were out the door and gone. Playing video games day and night. Contributing nothing and sucking you dry. Jake sleeps all day. He's not paying for anything. He has no job. This is his room. He showers every two weeks. I'm kind of glad we're doing this virtually. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. You've never had anybody working harder to bring you to the threshold of change than right now. Well, welcome, welcome. As you can see... COVID has changed the way we do things around here. It's even caused a nation of boomerang kids. Young adults you thought had launched. You thought they were out the door and gone. But due to circumstances, a lot of them are back in their childhood bedrooms. At first, I'm sure parents thought, hey, togetherness, family time, help with expenses. This will be great for a few months, but for others, boomerangers are living like pigs. They came back, they're playing video games day and night, contributing nothing and sucking you dry. Well, if that's the case, you need to listen up because today you may learn how to save yourself a lot of misery or how to get yourself out of a bad situation by listening to Susan and Randy's story. Both of these parents described their 27-year-old son, I said 27, Jacob as incapacitated, virtually unable to do anything for himself. But before you go feeling bad for Jacob or wondering how he could have ended up so helpless, let me tell you something. Poor old Jacob wasn't tragically injured in an accident or born with anything that limits his mobility. In fact, there's nothing physically wrong with Jacob at all, which leaves me wondering what in the hell is wrong with these parents? Take a look. This is Jacob's room. Hi, Jacob. Hi, Mom. Jake is almost 28 years old, and he's living in our house. He's dependent on us, and he just seems stuck. Jake sleeps all day. He's not paying for anything. He has no job. He doesn't really have any prospects for getting a job. It's about 5 a.m. Uh, I was just watching into the Spider-Verse, and now I think I'm going to go to bed. Jake has such a bizarre life. He's getting up at 6 p.m. and going to sleep at 6 a.m. When he was young, Jacob was always intelligent, very articulate. For Jake's whole life, Jake was passive. He was always very, very sensitive. Jake was always anxious. He never was happy-go-lucky. Jacob went to college right out of high school at 18. He found an improvisation comedy club, and that led him to start doing stand-up comedy. So, as you may have noticed, I look kind of like Jesus. <laughs> Jake is very good live. Which is ironic, because I actually dated a girl who looked kind of like the Virgin Mary, and was further ironic because she got pregnant by someone else. <laughs> he's very, very funny. Even when he's making fun of me, I still laugh. I was actually very excited that Jake was going to go to grad school. When the school told Jake they weren't going to recommend him for the teaching certificate, he had a downward spiral. You could tell that he was very, very depressed. My motivation is essentially a shot, and I barely feel motivated to get out of bed. Jake just stayed in his room. After I smoke and make coffee, I did the coffee upstairs and then just uh, play video games. If we just kicked Jake out of the house and said, go get a job, he would fall apart. I am sure that Jake will end up homeless unless we take care of him. I'm not angry at Jake. It's more of a sickness. I feel bad for him. Once you write to Dr. Phil, you're pretty desperate. It's very heartbreaking seeing Jake like this. Well, Randy and Susan are joining me virtually. Randy and Susan, it's nice to meet you. Listen. I've been really spending a lot of time on your situation, a lot of time on your story. And I keep coming back to one pivotal question. And the question I keep coming back to is not what's wrong with Jacob, 
but what the hell is wrong with you two? Why are you doing this to him? Of course, we want our son to be happy. So what we do is really to help him. We never thought of ourselves as hurting him. Susan says there's a force holding Jacob back. That force is sitting on this couch right now that I'm talking to. You guys are intelligent, accomplished people that have had productive lives. You've contributed to society. Both of you are perfect examples of what people want to achieve in America, right? Why would you not hold your son to the standard you've held yourself to? I kind of feel that he's just not capable of being stressed out too much. I think he's very emotionally fragile. I'm not saying that he doesn't have some issues. Do you know anybody that doesn't have issues? No, you're probably right. Yeah, he does have, his issues do seem more severe than the average person. Oh, they just, are now. Uh, they are now because you yes. have emotionally crippled this young man. Can we take a look at where he lives? This is his room, for example. I wouldn't allow a five-year-old to live in a room like this, and you allow him to live in this way. You're telling me that this is his level of function, this is his level of competency, this is all he's capable of? He's capable of more um, if he gets a very clear direction. No, wait a minute, Susan, come on. Look at this room. You're telling me that your son is not capable of keeping his room in, a, in better shape than this. I guess we've just lived with it so long now we just accept it, but it's not okay. And you're right, he is capable of not living that way. You are two people that hold yourself to standards and then you have a, a, a son here with an above average IQ, a college degree, and you're allowing this to happen and I wanna know why. It starts with this. There's no point of us talking about anything else until you Give me some explanation for this. I, I don't know, maybe out of guilt, parenting out of guilt. What, what are you guilty about? Hold that thought, you can tell me after the break. I'll give you a chance to gather because I know I'm hitting you hard here from the top because we don't have a lot of time and I intend to change this. We're gonna meet Susan and Randy's son, Jacob, who they say struggles to even shower. He showers every two weeks every two weeks and spends his days holed up in his bedroom. Things are so bad, Susan fears that he'll scare people with his bad hygiene. I'm kind of glad we're doing this virtually. He doesn't brush his teeth or showers every other Saturday. For God's sakes, I'm glad we're on satellite. We'll be right back. I love laying on my bed. My bedroom feels like both a prison and a sanctuary. I struggle with anxiety. I smoke once every hour. I have tried to apply for jobs and I just can't do it. I have flaws and I'm allowed to have them. Uh, you're wearing a suit. Why is that? Basically, my mom told me to. Well, that's both good and bad news. Jacob's hygiene is so bad. I've told Jacob that he should not be leaving the house the way he looks because he would scare people. He hardly ever showers, and when he does shower, he usually doesn't change his clothes. I haven't changed my clothes in about a week. And they're not attractive clothes. Jake usually smells quite bad. He smokes way too much, he's overweight. He's not brushing his teeth. His hair is very long and scraggly. He never brushes his hair. I've confronted Jake about his hygiene. Jake just doesn't seem to care. Susan and Randy say that since learning he failed his teaching observation twice last spring, their son Jacob has barely left his room, never mind the house. Now, Jacob says he's in a terrible funk and has no motivation to do anything except play video games and smoke cigarettes. Now, he says he feels like a complete failure. 
I love laying on my bed, and this is where I'm most comfortable. My bedroom feels kind of like both the prison and the sanctuary because it's where I feel most safe and where I can't really escape. I have tried to apply for jobs, to apply for other schools, and I just can't do it. The rejection kind of gets to you after a while. I definitely struggle with anxiety, and it is exacerbated by social settings. My parents try to make me out to be the ideal person. They would push me into social situations as a kid, which would just make me uncomfortable. My dad definitely just thought I was shy. He thought I needed to be around people, but I have anxiety, so of course I never really did. I find it very unrealistic, you know. Um, I have flaws and I'm allowed to have them. I smoke once every hour. I like to smoke in the backyard. I think it's fueled by the anxiety. Oh, it's a good, quick release. I was talking to a rabbi a little while ago and he said he wanted to try and make me more Jewish. I asked him, well, how would you go about doing that? And he goes, lose the crucifix. <laughs> Using comedy actually helped me build up my confidence. It made me kind of feel more secure in my own skin. I have a friend who is vegan and is always kind of on me about my health. So I keep telling her, come on, I'm fine. Jack Daniels is plenty vegan. <laughs> but I look at my future. What scares me that I may have wasted my life and not accomplished anything. I'm hoping Dr. Phil can help me just move on from this stage in my life. Move past whatever is blocking me, help me get out of this terrible funk I found myself in. Well, Jacob is also joining us uh, virtually. How are you, Jacob? Uh, Good. You look How a little you? different. You, you've showered, you've combed your hair, you're wearing a suit. Why is that? Um, basically, my mom told me to. Well, that's both good and bad news. It's good news in that you're coachable. It's bad news in that you're 27, is it? Yeah. And your mother had to tell you to take a shower, clean yourself up, put on a suit. Jacob, why do you not clean your bedroom? Um, essentially, it's just easier for me not to. I know where everything is. I know where I keep stuff within the mess. There is an order to the chaos. Welcome to my bedroom. This is where I hang out most of the day. I'd say I spend 99% of my time in my room. The only reason I really go downstairs or anything is for food or to smoke. So how often do you wash your sheets? Um, no idea. Uh, I got a bunch of cups that I forget to take down. What's underneath the bed? Just some junk, I guess. The stuff has been piling up for, I don't know, maybe a year. This shirt. Uh, this has been here for at least six months, I think. I'm too lazy to put it away. Basically, these are just packages from Amazon. I just haven't really gotten to around throwing them out. I have no idea how long they've actually been here. Probably months. So I have all these guitars for two reasons. One, because I like collecting instruments, and two, because I build the Garbox guitar. <laughs> This is kind of my video game station. I got a PS4, I got a Switch, I got a Wii U set up, I got an N64, I got an SNES. Let's take a look at my closet. I basically just throw the clothes right in here. Those are the bed sheets, but I never really use them. I'm kind of comfortable living in the mess. All right, Randy says last year he helped Jacob get a credit card to build up his credit. But, of course, Jacob failed to pay the bill too many times, so now his credit is worse than it was before he even had the credit card. Dr. Phil? We'll talk about time. that next. We have to take a break. I'll hold that thought. We'll be right back. He doesn't pay his bills. He doesn't take a shower. He doesn't clean up. He doesn't do anything for himself. Just like you don't rub two sticks together to get a fire. Why do you suppose that is? There's no necessity. Absolutely no necessity. I don't ask myself why he does this. I ask myself why not. My comedy is based off weird interactions I have with people. Uh, I find it kind of weird that more young people don't use Yiddish slang. I think it's amazingly that Jake does his stand-up comedy because to see someone shy and quiet like him get up on stage, he's very comfortable up on stage, much more so than in real life. 
of when I do comedy. The anxiety kind of just builds and builds, but after getting a few laughs, it just kind of releases. Now, when we were going to break, Susan, you wanted to say something, and I, I had to cut you off so we could go to break. Sorry, let me give you the floor now. I just wanted to bring up that at other times in his life, Jake was much more functional. High school, for example, he got himself up every day, went to class every day. He never had to be told to do that. It was just a, a, his normal functioning. So we've seen him be successful, but he's in this situation now. Mm -hmm. Well, Susan, let me ask you something. You have an oven and a range in the kitchen, right? Yes. Uh-huh. Um, and you use fire to cook with, right? Yes. Do you get two sticks and rub them together real fast to start a fire? No. Why not? It's quicker to use the range. So you've never had to rub two sticks together because there's an easier way to do it. Now, Jake, he lays around his room. He doesn't pay his bills. He doesn't take a shower. He doesn't clean up. He doesn't do anything for himself, just like you don't rub two sticks together to get a fire. Why do you suppose that is? There's no necessity. Absolutely no necessity. I don't ask myself why he does this. I ask myself why not. Let's just look at whether you guys enable him or not. He avoids taking risk and responsibilities and complains about unfair treatment. So Susan and Randy worry and feel responsible for Jacob. They feel stressed and resentful over having to take care of him. Now, Susan and Randy make excuses for Jacob. Jacob feels weak and inadequate and helpless. It's like we're on a racetrack that has no exit ramp here. We don't know how to get him off the track. Do you want off the track, Jacob? Uh, yes.
What do you want your life to look like? I want to uh, feel better about myself. I want to, you know, be a regular, working, productive member of society. Mm -hmm. Do you ever listen to the things you say to yourself? Here are just some of the things that jumped out at me. I basically feel miserable. Nothing brings me joy. I'm scared I won't have a future. I'm empty, broken, defeated. I feel like a failure. How do you think you're going to feel when that's the way you talk to yourself most of the time? Oh, same way I feel now, pretty terrible. You can't have that kind of internal dialogue and then look in the mirror and say, I got this. I got this. Put me in, coach. I'm kicking ass and taking names. I got this. There's no other possible outcome. I mean, mom, dad, do you see that? Yes, we see that. We don't know how to. Get don't don't him give to me a but. Don't possibly. give me a but. Just tell me you see it. It's just if he doesn't change what he says to himself, all the help. All the housing, all the money, all the pampering, all the excuses, if that doesn't change, everything else is a non-starter. Can we agree on that? Yes. yes. Susan says she wants to know, is Jacob sick or is he just lazy? Is there truly a force holding him back like she wonders? Well, I identified one. Is it the only one? We'll be right back. Guys, am I in the twilight zone here? You guys have gotten yourself into some kind of a bubble where you're treating him as though he's profoundly intellectually challenged. You, did you hear what you said? You said, yes, he's incapable of taking a shower. <laughs> he's, he's incapable of taking a shower. Jacob is not an independent person. He depends on us for most everything. Jake's living rent-free. He doesn't pay any money for food. We are paying for his car insurance, his phone. I spend about $500 a month supporting him. He's not applying for jobs, but actually applying for jobs for him under his name. Jake doesn't make doctor's appointments. He never takes a yearly checkup with the dentist. We've done everything for him. Jake is definitely overwhelmed with everything in life. We are at our wit's end at this point. My guests, Jacob, Susan, and Randy, are all joining me virtually. Now, Randy and Susan say they fear they will always need to have a place in their home for Jacob because he's incapable of caring for himself. Now, I, I want to test that thought because, Randy, um, you say Jacob is incapable of taking care of himself. Is that a true statement? I think so. I don't think he does all the things that everybody else does to make take care of himself. Jacob, is that true? Are you incapable of taking care of yourself? Uh, right now, I would say so. Really? Okay. Let let me let me break this down into behaviors. Are you incapable of taking a shower? It's just hard to get out of bed and kind of do it you know no, i didn't ask you if it was hard i'm asking you if that's within your behavioral repertoire yeah i know how to do it you know how to do it are you incapable of feeding yourself no are you incapable of putting on clothes no guys am i in the twilight zone here you guys have gotten yourself into some kind of a bubble where you're treating him as though he's profoundly intellectually challenged. You're actually telling yourself he's incapable of activities of daily living. You, did you hear what you said? You said, yes, he's incapable of taking a <laughs> he's, he's incapable of taking a shower. I'm not saying he's not depressed. I'm not saying he's not inert. You know, an inertia is the tendency for bodies at rest to remain at rest. He is certainly inert. 
my question here is capability. We have to we have to decide what Jake you're capable of, and you're capable of doing these things. You're just not motivated to do them, but you have the behavioral repertoire, correct? Yeah. Let's take a break. I, I, I have someone that I, I want this family to meet. I think he can really bring light to this force Susan believes is holding Jacob back. And we are going to start behaving our way into the sunlight. We'll be right back. Can you imagine if you were raising a child and you were saying to the child what you're saying to yourself and you just put down, put down, put down, put down, what kind of self-worth do you think that child would have? It would be terrible, right? Yeah, I think that child would end up on your show too. Jacob's always had girlfriends, and it has disturbed me that since he's been home, he's not had a girlfriend. That's not typical of Jake. Jake doesn't have a girlfriend currently for many reasons. One is he's in his room all the time. You are not going to meet a girl sitting up in that room. No girl is going to happen to walk by. Why a girl would want to spend time with Jake. He doesn't look very good and smell very good. And if he did meet a girl that liked him, I would question that girl. My guests, Jacob, Susan, and Randy are all joining me virtually. Uh, I also want to welcome someone else to this conversation, uh, world-renowned life coach Mike Baer. He's the author of Best Self, Be You Only Better, and the soon-to-be-released One Decision. Uh, I consider him the best, the best at helping people maximize their true potential. Now, as a life coach, what's your gut level reaction as you hear all this and have studied all this? Thank you, Dr. Phil. My gut reaction is esteem comes from doing esteemable things. And as you pointed out, there's nothing that you're doing, Jacob, that is esteemable, that actually would create some self-esteem in your own life. When Dr. Phil talks about getting up, throwing things away, cleaning your room, getting organized because everything's getting done for you, we need to start to develop some self-esteem. I said, first off, internal dialogue needs to change. Because if, Jacob, if you continue talking to yourself the way you are, can you imagine if you were raising a child and you were saying to the child what you're saying to yourself and you just put down, put down, put down, put down, how do you think that child would grow up? What kind of self-worth do you think that child would have? It would be terrible, right? Yeah, I think that child would end up on your show too. Yeah, exactly. Now, if instead of that, you started saying to that child more realistic things, finding the positives within that child, what do you think that child would begin to do, Mike? Child would start to live the life they really want. Exactly. They li live the life they deserve, you know? And so that's number one, that's mm -hmm. internal dialogue. Then number two is behavior. You can behave your way to success, and that's what you want to do with, with Jake to start with, right? Yeah, the, the first thing we would start with is uh, completely behaving your way and having a structure to your day to completely reinvent the life you have because nothing is really working for you right now, right? Yeah. There's only so many more levels in the video game that you can complete, right? Pretty much. I want 48 to 72 hours with Jake where you're going to be taking totally different action. Uh, the first step is you turn in your video game system to your parents today and we would be on the phone several times a day just initially reinventing your life over the next 48 hours. You give me 48 hours, I guarantee you I can reinvent your life. And by on the phone, we're talking Zoom session, whatever, because you want to see what's going on. You want to actually have him start behaving his way to success. And look, there's no question, Jacob is depressed. But I don't know whether the depression is reactive to his situation or contributing to his situation. Maybe he needs an adjustment to medications. I don't know. But the first thing we've got to do is behavioral. Start with the basics, right? The basics. I mean, I want to look under your bed with you. 
I want to see your your uh, organized chaos and really understand what we're going to be cleaning up in your life. All right, we got to take care of Susan's panic attack because when Mike said we want to look under your bed, she'd be like, oh my God, don't do that. So is Jacob ready to set down the cigarettes, the video game controller, and start picking up his life? We're going to talk about that next and what that really means on a minute-to-minute, hour-to-hour basis. We'll be right back. You're going to have a coach as well because we need to change the dynamic between you and your son. Hey, everyone. Season 19 is underway. If you never made it to Hollywood to be a part of the studio audience, well, now it doesn't matter. If you're in Oklahoma, Georgia, Texas, New Jersey, or anywhere else in the world, now you can be a part of our virtual audience. All you need is a computer and an internet connection. Go to drphil.com and click on Be Part of the Audience for more information. That's right. Hope to see you soon. Susan and Randy say they have put their plans to sell their house on pause. I'm hoping they're going to take that off of pause because I, I, I would really encourage them to sell that house and buy and go get a one-bedroom place <laughs> for a while where they can enjoy what they've worked so hard to have. I'm here with Coach Mike Bear. And Mike has something else that he wants the three of them to do. And it's an empowerment support group that he's put together. It's free every Tuesday at 5 p.m. And it's a great thing that I've really supported him doing, particularly during this pandemic session where people can plug in and get some positive energy in their life. Take a look at this little quick reel. Hey everyone, my name is Mike Bear, also known as Coach Mike. I'm a New York Times bestselling author and I'm on the Dr. Phil program regularly. And now is more of a time than ever not to isolate and be connected with others. And I have a free empowerment support group that happens globally every week. It's fun, it's creative, it's emotional, it's supportive. Thank you for all you do, Mike. You just go to coachmikebear.com, you add your email, You'll get a notification every week of who the different guest speaker is. We have an awesome community. It's done over Zoom every week at 5 p.m. Pacific time. So no excuses. There's a solution, a magical solution. And I look forward to seeing you there. Well, Mike, this has been a great thing you're doing. And you have thousands of people showing up for this. And you cover some great stuff. You've got some great speakers. But you want the three of them showing up for this as well. I, I want the, the three of you showing up for this so there's a consistent structure uh, in your lives where you're all doing something together. And every week it's a different topic about working on yourself. There's exercises you're all going to be doing as a family. So it, you can have that conversation together afterwards that really makes you feel connected. So we'll put that on the to-do list. And now you're, you're going to start... Uh, with Jacob in some real basics. So, Jacob, you're looking at your new best friend. I'm going to be like a shirt on your back in the sense of being all over you over the next few days, really helping you achieve, like, how do you change your environment? How do you change your appearance, the structure, the routine? And really just start to eliminate everything that isn't working for you and start to get you fulfilled again. All right, and then after this intense just kind of on blast intervention then what happens after that so after that we're going to be getting you a coach from cast centers who's going to be working with you over eight weeks to carry on what we worked on together and we're going to be providing the same service to your parents as well yeah now parents you're going to have a coach as well because we need to change the dynamic between you and your son and so we're bringing a team in so you guys don't have to be guessing at what's the right thing to do. We're going to give you a good kickstart here. And I'm telling you, this is a situation that is going to change dramatically uh, in a short period of time. And you notice we're not asking you to kick your son to the curb. I know you have a fear that he would wind up under a bridge and that that would be okay with him. 
We want to make sure that doesn't happen and that that's not okay with him and come up with a plan that everybody can be excited about. Does that make sense to the two of you? Yes. Oh, yes. I'm excited about it. And Jacob, you're a willing spirit here, right? Absolutely. Does this sound like something you think you can do? Um, I don't know yet, but I'm more than willing to find out. You know, that's a fair answer, and I, that's all I can ask from you. Well, it's going to start when? Now. Okay, you're going to talk to him later today. Yeah. yeah, we're going right away. All right. So this is on, guys. This is on. Look, I want to thank all of my guests today, including Coach Mike Bear, for offering help to Jacob, Susan, and Randy with getting set up with a life coach from Cast Centers, which you can find a link to on drphil.com. Uh, and check out Mike's new book called One Decision and his podcast produced by Stage 29. Check out the podcast on Apple or Stitcher. Coming up, my next guest found a way to make old things new again. Now she's asking for help to make her look new again. We'll meet her next. My next guest, Bonnie, has a unique hobby that has turned into a business. Bonnie says she's hoping to bring back a popular trend of the 70s and 80s. Take a look. I recently started a business taking old jeans, turning them into purses. I have a knack for making old things new again. Jean purses were a fad back when I was growing up, and I'm really hoping to make them cool again. I put my own zhuzh on it. This one is a under the sea theme. I am such a perfectionist when it comes to my creations, and sometimes it stresses me out because I set my bar really high. Making these purses is my pride and joy, but I wish I could make other things in my life look new again. So, Bonnie, thank you for being here. So, how did you come up with the idea of turning jeans into purses? Well, my mom was an amazing seamstress, and growing up, she taught me how to sew. So, one day I decided I was going to make old jeans into a new skirt. And as I cut the legs off, I realized these would make really cute purses. So I've been making them ever since. Yeah, well, it's easy to do if you know how. So yeah. <laughs> uh, you mentioned in the tape that you were a perfectionist. Is that just with your hobby or also in your life? Well, I've always set a really high bar for myself and I, uh, I work really hard at trying to make everything perfect. So yes, I would say I'm a perfectionist in life. Yeah, well, I've always had you know, kind of that tendency, but I've substituted in to strive for excellence, not perfection, because you can really be frustrated by trying to get that last two or three percent. Yes. But if you struggle for excellence instead of perfection, that's attainable. Perfection, not happening, but that's attainable. So Bonnie says being a child of the 80s, she has a lot of wonderful memories, but there was one trend from back in the day that has caused some long-lasting effects that she now tries to hide behind sunglasses. Take a look. I am not happy at all with the way my skin is aging. I spent a good deal of my teens and 20s at the beach. If baby oil was considered a sunscreen, that's my protection. I am paying the price for not protecting my skin. I completely regret it. What frustrates me most about my skin are these fine lines and wrinkles, crow's feet around my eyes, and the under eye puffiness. I know I can't reverse the damage that was caused years ago. For the time being, I'm just going to put on my shades and go about my day. Well, Bonnie, I certainly hope you're using sunscreen now. Right? I am, Dr. Fell. I'm using sunscreen. I'm wearing hats. I'm taking so much better care of my skin these days. But yeah. since the damage has already been done, especially around my eyes, I'm really hoping to be able to find a solution. Yeah, well, I'd like you to meet dermatologist and spokesperson for Rock Skin Care, Dr. Sabrina Fabi. So it's good to see you again. Nice to see you. Dr. Fabi, Bonnie said that her greatest concern about her skin are the wrinkles around her eyes, so give us your thoughts. So right now, as we're all out and about, all people are seeing are our eyes, as the masks are covering the majority of our face as we protect our health and the health of others from coronavirus. And so, Bonnie, you mentioned that you weren't so good about using your sunscreen in your youth, and we know how harmful UV rays can be to our skin, and so this can definitely contribute to wrinkles and crow's feet around the eyes, as you describe. 
And so I'm really happy that you're finally being good about your, you. uh, your protection habits. But as far as those wrinkles around your eyes, it's not too late to turn back the hands of time. So Dr. Fabi, what would you recommend for Bonnie? I think it's important to use products that contain the right ingredients to target the specific issues of concern. So in your case, Bonnie, let's focus around your eyes. I like to recommend Rock Retinol Correction Eye Cream. It's a clinically proven formula that improves the three signs of aging that concern you and many women. Well, here are some before and after pictures, actually. Tell us what we're looking at here. Look at the results of these before and after photos. Studies show that it visibly reduces puffiness and dark circles in four weeks. But what you're gonna really love is that it's clinically proven to reduce the appearance of crow's feet by 50%. Yeah, 50%, Bonnie, what do you think? Well, just looking at those photos, I can see this is exactly what I need to help me bring back some youth to my eyes. Yeah. And yeah. you're gonna love that it's also available at Walmart for less than $20. But Bonnie, Rock has a gift for you. They are giving you a one-year supply. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That's amazing. There you go. So you got to use it. I promise. Yeah, you, 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 you got to use it. <laughs> Look, so I'd like to thank all of my guests today, and a special thanks to Dr. Sabrina Fabi. Thank you so much for being here for and giving me. us the information. You, for more information about today's show, log on to drphil.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much.